الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد in the name of Allah the most merciful the one who bestows mercy indeed all praise due to Allah the Lord of the worlds and may peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on his family, companions, and all those who follow the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until Yawm al-Qiyamah. Beloved brothers and sisters, respected elders, the subject which we are going to talk about today is important to every Muslim. Because as Muslims, our subject that we're talking about today, this is the goal or the objective <coughs> for which we do everything and which we do anything. It's the reason why we wake up early in the morning to pray Fajr and why we remain awake at night to pray Isha. The subject matter today is the reason why we sacrifice our wealth and we sacrifice our time and we sacrifice our energy. Because all of us, we are trying to attain that place. And the place that I'm talking about, it isn't in front of us and nobody amongst us has seen it and yet despite this we still work for it and we hope to attain it and we ask Allah to make it our abode and Allah said in the Quran mentioning its hidden reward He said فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُمْ and no soul knows the reward of this place which will be a delight to the eye and it has been hidden from them but this place will be given to the believers why as a reward for the action which they used to do and no person can imagine or think about the reality of Jannah the Prophet وسلم, said that Allah says, I have prepared for my righteous worshippers. That place, that reward, which no eye has ever seen. And no ear has ever heard of. And that reward which no person, no mind can ever imagine. We are talking about Sil'atullah, the merchandise of Allah. The Prophet وسلم, he described Jannah as being Sil'atullah al ghaliyah the expensive, precious merchandise which Allah offers. And as you know, in this world, when you want to buy a merchandise, you can never have it for free. Rather, you have to give something in exchange, and then you are given the merchandise. And that which Allah has, ay Jannah, it is Sil'atullah al ghaliyah It is the precious and the expensive merchandise of Allah. And it is Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala inna sil'at allahi, uh, ala inna sil'at allahi al-jannah. Verily, the merchandise of Allah, it is al-jannah. And before we speak about the descriptions of jannah and the reward of jannah, what is the correct belief of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah regarding jannah? Firstly, we have to understand that Jannah is from Ilmul Ghayb. Speaking about Jannah is knowledge regarding the unseen. 
and Jannah is Alamul Ghaib. Jannah is from the world of the unseen. So therefore it isn't allowed for us to speak about Jannah without knowledge. We cannot say anything about Jannah without an evidence. And we cannot negate anything from Jannah without an evidence. Because it is Ilmul Ghaib. It is from the knowledge of the unseen. And Ilmul Ghaib cannot be proven through logic or science or experience or cultures. Ilmul Ghaib can only be proven through Wahi. And for this reason, it isn't allowed for a person to say anything about Jannah or anything about Ilmul Ghaib unless there is a direct, clear evidence from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet. Secondly, the word Jannah, when we translate it into English, we translate it as paradise or heaven. And Al Jannah is singular, i.e., one paradise and one heaven. But the word Jannah it refers to everything which Allah has prepared as a reward for the believers. Everything. The gardens and the rivers and the food and the delight and the reward. Everything it is referred to as being Jannah. And the third point is that even though Al Jannah is singular, but in reality, Al Jannah to Jannat. That Jannah is many. Jannat. There are many gardens of paradise and many <coughs> levels of the heavens. So even though we say Al Jannah, we are referring to Jannat, many gardens of paradise. In the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, an, a woman, and her name is Umm Rabi' bint al Bara, she had a son who is called Al Haritha. And Al Haritha radiallahu anhu was Sahabi Jalil, a great companion of the Prophet. And this companion, Al Haritha, he was martyred in the Battle of Badr. He was killed in the Battle of Badr. And his mother, Umm Rubir, she came to the Prophet. She said, Ya Nabi Allah, O Prophet of Allah, Will you not tell me about Haritha? If he has gone to Jannah, I will remain patient. She's lost her son. He died in the Battle of Badr. She's never seen him again. So she came to the Prophet and said, That if Haritha has gone to Jannah or will be in Jannah, I will remain patient. And if Haritha is going to be in a place which is, which is not Jannah. She said, Then I will cry and weep over him. And the Prophet replied to her, Ya Umma Haritha, O mother of the Haritha. Innaha Jananun fil Jannah. That in Jannah are many Jannat, many gardens of paradise. Wa inna ibnaka asabi fil dawsil a'la. And your son Haritha, he has attained the greatest level of paradise. Al fil dawsil a'la. So there is more than one Jannah, rather, Al Jannah is Jannat, many gardens of paradise. Also from our belief and our aqeedah regarding Jannah is that the Jannat, they have gates or doors, abwaab. And Allah mentioned these in the Quran. Allah said, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا That those people who have taqwa of their Lord, they will be taken to Jannah in their groups. Until they approach Jannah. And then the doors of Jannah are open for them. May Allah make us from them. 
So this ayah shows us that Jannah, it has gates or doors. And respected brothers and sisters, as we're going through the ayat and the ahadith, I want you to try to pay attention to the descriptions of the people of Jannah. So in this ayah, who did Allah mention will be taken to Jannah? وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُ Those people who had taqwa of the Lord, they'll be taken to Jannah. And so therefore, if you want to be from the people of Jannah, upon you is a taqwa Loving Allah, fearing Allah, being conscious of Allah, remembering Allah, being cautious between halal and haram, always thinking about Allah. This is whom Allah has made Jannah for. So Jannah is for the people of taqwa. Jannah isn't for those people who are corrupt and careless and forgetful of Allah and don't care or have any concern for Al-Islam and for Halal and Haram. Allah prepared, Allah prepared Jannah for the people of Taqwa. Also from our belief regarding Jannah is that the gates of Jannah are eight in number. There are eight gates of Jannah. As is in the hadith of Sahli ibn Sa'id in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet وسلم, said, فِي الْجَنَّةِ ثَمَانِيَةُ أَبْوَابِ That in Jannah, there are eight gates. فِيهَا بَابٌ يُسَمَّى الرَّيَّانِ And there's a gate in Jannah from these eight gates, and it is called الرَّيَّانِ And who amongst the brothers, and please put your hands up, can tell me that this gate, Ar-Rayyan, which people is it for? As Who will end now? as, as, as The Prophet وسلم, said, Ar-Rayyan, la yadakhuluhu illa as That Ar-Rayyan, only the people of fasting will enter into Jannah through this gate. So again, pay attention. That if you want to be that person who is blessed with entering into Jannah, through this gate, Al-Rayyan, then what do you have to do? You have to fast. Fasting Ramadan, and then fasting Nawafil prayers. And if there was no other reward for fasting, and no other benefit for fasting, except that there is a gate in Jannah which has been named, prepared exclusively for you only, if you're from the people of fasting, then this is enough of a reason to be fasting Ramadan and the Nawafil fasting. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith of Umar radiallahu anhu Sahih Muslim, Ma min Muslimin yatawadda fayasbil wudu. There is no Muslim who performs wudu and he performs wudu properly. Thumma yaqul. And then he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنِي مِنَ التَّوَّابِينَ وَجَعَلْنِي مِنَ الْمُتَطَّهِرِينَ Any Muslim who makes wudu and he makes wudu properly. And then he says this dua. I bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is alone and he has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the message of Allah. Allahumma ja'ali min at tawabi O oh Allah, make me from the people of repentance. And O oh Allah, make me from the people of al-mutatahireen, of purification. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, illa futihat lahu abwabu al-jannah al-thamaniyah. That this person, the eight gates of jannah are open for him. Wa yadhul min ayyha sha'ah. And he enters into jannah from whichever gate he wants. And subhanAllah, think about how easy is the action and how great is the reward. Wudu. But make wudu properly. And then say this simple dua. So really, a person who hasn't memorized this dua and is neglectful over this dua is really at loss and wretched and misery. Such a simple action and such a great reward. So if you don't know this dua, and all of us were born ignorant, 
All of us, we never knew this dua at one stage. The least you can do after this reminder is to sit with the Imam, with the brother, with the Shaykh, and learn this dua. Also from our Aqeedah regarding Jannah is that every gate of Jannah or every door of Jannah has a gatekeeper, a khazin, a gatekeeper or a, a god you could say. And this is also mentioned in the Quran. Allah said, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ That those people who had taqwa of their Lord, they were taken إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا They are taken and led to Jannah in their groups حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا Until when they approach Jannah وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا And then the doors of Jannah are opened وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا And then the gatekeepers of the doors or the gates, they say, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Greetings of peace be upon you. Tibutum. And you are good and pure. Fadhuluha khalidi. So enter into Jannah and remain in it forever. So this ayah shows us that at every gate of Jannah are khazana, gatekeepers. And as for the name Ridwan, it is uh, spread amongst the people that the main gatekeeper of Jannah, his name is Ridwan. He's an angel whose name is Ridwan. And this was mentioned in some of the hadith, some narrations. However, the ulama, they question the isnad of these narrations. And some of the ulama mention Ridwan is the gatekeeper of Jannah. However, and Allah knows best, there isn't a clear, authentic evidence that there is a gatekeeper called Ridwan and Allah knows best. From our Aqeedah regarding Al-Jannah is that the first person to enter into Jannah and the first person to open the gates of Jannah will be your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is one of the great virtues and the fadl and the great stations and ranks of your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over all the other prophets and messengers. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, he said, Ati Bab al Jannah, that I will come and approach the door of Jannah. Fastaftihu, and I will seek permission for it to be opened. Fayaqul al Khazim, and then the gatekeeper will say, Man anta, who are you? And then I will say, Ana Muhammad. I am Muhammad. And then the angel will say, Bala umirtu Allah aftaha li ahadin qabla. That only you I was ordered to open it for, and nobody else before you. And also from our aqeedah regarding Jannah is that the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will enter into Jannah before all the other Ummah all the previous nations and this also shows us the fadl of the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam over the other nations and the ummah and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he gave our ummah a particular name he said nahnu al akhirun al awwal that we are the last and we are the first we are the last and we are the first. And the meaning of <coughs> Al Akhirun Al Awalun, the last and the first, Al Imam Al Nawawi Rahmullah mentioned Al Akhirun Fi Zamani Wal Wujud. That we are the last who appeared from the Ummah and we are the last who existed in terms of time. Wal Awalun, Ay As Sabiquna Bil Fadli Wa Dukhul Al Jannah. And the first meaning we come first in terms of the virtue and we come first in terms of entering into Jannah. And think subhanAllah that we are the last ummah to come and yet Allah will enter us first into Jannah. May Allah make us from those people. So we are al akhirun al awwal The first and the last and the first. And also from our belief regarding Jannah is that the fuqara of this ummah, the poor and needy of this ummah, 
they will enter into Jannah before the rich and wealthy of this Ummah. And the Fuqara amongst the Muhajirin will be the first to enter into Jannah. And the Prophet said, Inna Fuqara al Muhajirin yasbiqoon al Aghniya yawm al Qiyamah. That the poor amongst the Muhajirin will come first on yawm al Qiyamah before the rich. And this is also from the kindness of Allah subhanahu that those poor people who had Iman and they had Sabr and they were pleased with the decree of Allah and they did the righteous actions because Allah gave them some struggle in this dunya, the struggle of poverty. And as for the people of wealth, then they lived an easier life. For this reason, the people of poverty will also taste the relief of Jannah before the people of wealth. But only the people of Iman and patience and those who are pleased with the decree of Allah. And also from our belief regarding the Jannah is that Jannah is something which is real. Meaning it isn't metaphorical, rather Jannah is real. And it is physical. And it has already been created. And it will never end or cease. And this is the Aqeed of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And Allah said regarding Jannah, It has already been prepared for the people of Taqwa, meaning it exists. And also it will never cease, it will remain forever. So these are some aspects of the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah regarding Al Jannah. After this, Allah mentioned many different names of Jannah in the Quran. And all of them refer to the same place. And as a principle in the Arabic language, whenever something is given many names, it shows how great and important this thing is. And for this reason, Allah has 99 names which we know of. And Allah Subhanahu has many other names which we do not know of. Also like in the dunya, so when, for example, somebody wants to describe a superstar or describe a king or a queen, they have many, many titles before the actual names. And in the Quran and the Sunnah, many names of Jannah have been mentioned. So the first of them is Al-Jannah. And linguistically, Al-Jannah means garden. And the word Jannah, it comes from the three root letters, Jim. Noon and Noon. And the meaning of Jim, Noon and Noon is something which is hidden, something which cannot be seen. And for this reason, Jin are called Jin because they are hidden from us. And the helmet is called a Majanna because it conceals the head of a person. And Janna is called Janna. Because no eye has seen Jannah. It is hidden from the people. And also from the names of Jannah is Darus Salam. So Allah said in the Quran, Lahum Darus Salam inda Rabbihim. That for them is the abode of As Salam from their law. Wallahu yad'u ila Daris Salam. And Allah calls to the abode of As Salam. And the meaning of as-salam is as-salama, i.e. safety and security and peace from any disturbance, from any trouble. Because Jannah will be such a place in which there will be no insecurity and no fears and no danger. And also Jannah is called Dar as-salam because one of the names of Allah is as-salam. One of the names of Allah is As-Salam. And Jannah is Darullah. It is the abode which Allah has prepared. So it is Darul Salam, meaning the abode which Allah, who is As-Salam, He has prepared for the believers. And also, it is called As-Salam because Allah will keep its people safe. And also, it is called Darul Salam because the greeting between the people of Jannah will be As-Salam. And all these reasons why it is called Dar As-Salam. And Allah said in the Quran, وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٌ That the greeting 
the greetings of the people of Jannah in it will be a salam. And also Allah said in the Quran, Wal Malaika Yadakuluna alayhim min kulli ba. And the angels they will enter upon the inhabitants of Jannah from every door and they will say Salamun alaykum. Greetings of peace upon you. Bima sabartum. Because of the patience which you show. And notice again, brothers, this description of the people of Jannah. For who? Bima sabartu. Because of the patience which you had. So if you want to be from the people of Jannah, upon you is patience. And what is the meaning of sabr? It means when it comes to worshipping Allah, you have to be diligent. And when it comes to staying away from sins, you have to be diligent. And when you are faced with any difficulty, a death in the family, a loss of a child, poverty, illness, anxieties, emotional issues, the break of a marriage, then you have to have sabr, you have to be patient, and you have to hope for the reward of Allah. So that Jannah, the angel will say, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. The greetings of Salam upon you due to the patience which you had in the dunya. And not only will the angels give salam to the people, but also Allah will give the greetings of salam to the people in Jannah. And Allah said in the Quran, Lahum fiha fakiha. That in Jannah, for the people will be fruits, fruits whatever they desire. And for them is whatever they want. Salamun qawlan min rabbil rahim. And there will be salam, which will be a word from the most merciful Lord. And also from the names of Jannah is Darul Khuld. And the meaning of Al Khuld is eternity. Because only the Akhirah is for eternity. As for this dunya, ikhwa, this is a temporary and short life. And for this reason, the Muslim, he struggles in this temporary life for the eternal reward of the Akhirah. And the intelligent Muslim, ayyul ikhwa, the intelligent Muslim, doesn't take anything in this life at face value. And what I mean by this is, that if in front of you there is a struggle, something which is wajib, like for example giving your wealth, or giving your time, or praying fajr for example, it's not easy. Who wants to give their wealth? Who wants to give their time? Who wants to leave the warmth of their bed? So there's a little bit of a struggle. But the intelligent Muslim looks beyond the struggle. And he sees behind the struggle, Jannah. So this struggle is temporary, but behind it is a reward which is for eternal, eternity. And so the Muslim bears the temporary struggle for the reward which is eternal. And also if you see in front of you a sin, a desire, something which your soul wants, don't take your face value. Look beyond the temporary reward of the dunya. And when you look beyond the temporary reward of the dunya, you will see the pain of Jahannam na'udhu billah. So a person, he sacrifices the temporary reward of the dunya to save himself from the permanent punishment of the akhirah. Because that is Darul Khud. And this is how a Muslim should be. And also from the names of Jannah is Darul Muqamah. Darul Muqamah. And the meaning of Al Muqamah is the place of residence. The abode of residence in which people will remain. And Allah said in the Quran regarding the people of Jannah, and they will say, All praise is for Allah, the one who removed the anxieties from us. Verily, our Lord, He is the most forgiving and He is a shakur. الذي أحلنا دار المقامة من فضله the one who gave us and settled us in دار المقامة from his kindness and from his grace so ask Allah for this great abode and also from the names of Jannah is جنة المأوى and the meaning of مأوى is the place of refuge where people will be able to relax 
And Allah said in the Quran, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ And as for the one who fears the standing in front of his Lord, وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى And he prevents his self from that which it desires. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى This person, Jannah, is his ma'wa, his place of residence and his abode of refuge. And notice again, ayyul ahbab, this ma'wa, this jannah, who is it for? How did Allah describe its people? He said two things, man khafa maqama rabbihi, the one who fears the standing in front of his Lord, who always remembers the standing in front of his Lord. You see in front of you a haram, which is calling you, Remember the standing in front of Allah. And that person who controls his soul from that which it desires. So money is desirable to our self. And women desirable to our self. And enjoyment of the dunya is desirable to our self. But the one who prevents his self because that is haram for him. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى for this person, Jannah is his abode. And also from the names of Jannah is Al-Adam. And some of the ulama mentioned that Al-Adam is a particular type of Jannah, a particular level of Jannah. And the correct view of Allah is that rather all of the Jannat are Jannat Al-Adam, as Allah mentioned in the Quran. Also one of the names of Jannah is Darul Hayawan. And the meaning of al hayawan is al haya life. Meaning the real life is a life of Jannah. And Allah said in the Quran, Wa inna dar al akhirah lahi al hayawan. The very the life of the hereafter, the abode of the hereafter, this is the life. Because there will be no more death. There will only be the death of the dunya. Then after this, there is no more death. There is only life. And it is the life of the akhirah. And also from the names of Jannah is Jannah al Na'im. Allah said, Inna الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those people who have Iman and they do righteous actions, لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ نَعِيمٌ For them are Jannat of an naim of delight and reward and happiness. But notice for which people, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ You have to have Iman, Tawheed, Taqwa, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And you have to do righteous actions. So just because you are born a Muslim, or just because your name is a Muslim, or just because your father was a Muslim, this isn't sufficient to enter into Jannah. Rather, real Iman, real Tawheed, and righteous actions. And from the names of Jannah is Al-Maqam Al-Ameen, the place or the residence of safety, because it is such. And also Al-Firdaus, and the ulama mentioned that Al-Firdaus is the loftiest level of Jannah. And as for the descriptions of Jannah, there are many ayat in the Quran which describe Jannah. Many, many ayat and many ahadith. In fact, there isn't almost a page of the Quran except that it mentions something about the hereafter, something about Jannah, something about the reward, something about Jahannam, something about the punishment. So if you really want to know the descriptions of Jannah, you have to recite the Qur'an. And you have to understand the Qur'an. And you have to contemplate the Qur'an. And as an example, Allah mentioned regarding Jannah, He said, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ That the description of Jannah, which the people of Taqwa have been promised. Who the people of Taqwa? He said, فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِنْ مَاءٍ غَيْرُ آسٍ That it contains rivers, مِنْ مَاءٍ غَيْرِ آسٍ Rivers in which there will be water which will not be stagnant. وَأَنْهَارُ مِنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُهُ And other rivers of milk which the taste will not be spoiled. وَأَنْهَارُ مِنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ And rivers of wine which will be tasteful to those who taste. وَأَنْهَارُ مِنْ عَسَلٍ مُصَفَّى and rivers of honey, which is pure. And for them, in it is every type of fruit. And a forgiveness from the Lord. 
And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he mentioned that in these ayat, Allah talks about water, and He talks about milk, and He talks about honey, and He talks about wine. And we have in this dunya water, we have in this dunya milk and wine and honey. So we have this with us here. So why did Allah mention for it to be such a great reward in Jannah? And in the other hadith, Qudsi, the Prophet said that Allah says, no eye has heard, no, ear, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has ever thought about what is in Jannah. Ibn Abbas said that the only similarity between the rewards of Jannah and between that which exists in this dunya is just a name. This is only. So the only similarity between the milk of Jannah and the milk of this dunya is that it is called milk. That's it. As for the taste and the fragrance and the sweetness and the smell, then we cannot imagine. And why did Allah give it a similar name? So we can understand something. Meaning we have some.